Here are the first five terms in our arithmetic sequence. Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term. Okay, so guys, there's a quick way to do this. And the quick way is you go, right, it's going up in fours plus four plus four. So you go, right, the nth term is four times n, because we're going up in fours. And then you go, right, for the first term, if the first term is one and four times one is four, I need to subtract three to get the one. So that's kind of the quick way to do it. I like to use the formula, which isn't in the formula sheet, guys, that the, the nth term, or u of n, is equal to a plus n minus one d. If you learn this formula, this always works. So it's, it's a useful formula to know. And then you just go, right, u of n is equal to, a is the first term, it's one. d is four, and n is just n because it's, we're trying to get the nth term. So I just sub one plus n minus one times d, which is four, and then just be careful when you multiply these out. It's one plus four times n is four n, four times negative one is minus four, and you're left with four n minus three. So both methods are perfectly fine. This is obviously way quicker. If it's super easy like this, yeah, I'd go with that method, but this method will always work, okay. The nth term of another sequence is this find an expression in terms of m for the two nth term. Okay, so the nth term means just whatever. If you want to find the tenth term, you sub in ten into n. If you want to find the hundredth term, you sub in a hundred. If you want to find the two mth term, you sub in two m. So you just go three times two m, three times two m plus five, which is equal to six m plus five. Okay. So arguably not a simple start to the paper, guys, but um, not too difficult. Okay, here's the probabilities. It can land on one, two, three, or four. The probability it will land on two is equal to the probability that it will land on four. So these two are equal. She's gonna spin the no uh, number of times. She works out that the average, she works out an estimate for the number of times it will land on three is 45. Work on an estimate uh, on, the number of times it will land on four. Okay, so we'll first find these probabilities, guys. They're the same. We don't know what they are. Let's call them both x. And then we know these four probabilities have to add up to one. So 0 0.26 plus x plus 0 0.18 plus x equals one. Two x, x plus x is two x. This plus this is 0 0.44 equals one, two x equals 0 0.56, which means x is this divided by two, which is 0 0.28. Okay, once we have x, we can say, right, this is equal to 0 0.28, this is equal to 0 0.28. He says, the number of times it will land on three is 45. So 18% of the time, it lands on 45. So let's go guys, 18% of the time, because it's 0 0.18, he lands on 45. And we wanna find what would 28% of the time be. So easiest way to do this is you do 1% gives me this divided by 18, which whatever that is, and then 28% is this divided by 18 times 28. And that is 45 over 18 times 28, which is 70. So the answer is, um, the answer is 70. Okay, 70. Question three. Highest common factor of 56 and 84, show your working clearly. So guys, your calculator can do this. Um, well, sorry, it can find the, the prime factors. But he, if he says show your working clearly, I'm gonna draw this, the prime factor tree. The prime factor tree, seven times eight, then I break up eight into four times two, and I break up four into two times two. So 56 equals seven times two times two times two. Then I do the same for 84. 
84 is 7 times 12. 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2. So 84 is equal to 7 times 2 times 2 times 3. The highest common factor is the one that has uh, or it's the common ones multiplied together. So it's 7 times 7, sorry, 7 times 2 times 2. And then I can't multiply anything else because um, the 2 and the 3, they don't have a, a common pair. And if you were to draw this as a Venn diagram, you don't have to draw the Venn diagram here, guys, but I often recommend it. Um, if you draw the Venn diagram where this is 56 and this is 84, what goes in the middle is a 7, a 2, and a 2. And this, in the 56, there's another 2, and in the 84, there's another 3. The highest common factor is 7. It's the middle ones. 7 times 2 times 2, which is 28. Now, guys, you may think, hang on. That's a lot of working, and I could have done that in my head. And to be fair, if you got this in your head without show, well, it does actually say show your working clearly. Um, but even if you got this, you would most likely get two marks. Um, however, that is the working, that is the correct working. Okay, part B. Find the lowest common multiple of this and this. Right, same kind of thing. Show our working clearly. I'm going to say. 60, let's do our factor tree, 15 times 4, 3 times 5, 2 times 2, we'll do 72 is 9 times 8, 3 times 3, 4 times 2, 2 times 2. So, um, 60, let's do it here. 60 is 3 times 5 times 2 times 2. 72 is 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Venn diagram. Okay, this is 60. This is 72. The common ones are 3. We have a common 3. We have a common 2. And we have a common 2. So inside here, I'm going to put a 3, a 2, and a 2. And then what's left in the 60 is a 5. And what's left in the 72 is a 3 and a 2. The LCM is all of these multiplied together. So it's 5, but you only do these ones once. 5 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. And this is 5 times 3 times 2, times 2, times 3, times 2, which is 360. 360. Question 4. Okay, the diagram shows part shows parts of three regular polygons. Polygon B has n sides work out the value of n. Okay, um, so guys okay regular polygon regular when i see the word regular i always think of the external angle but before we get the interior or external angle let's get x so these are three angles around about a point so these have to add up to 360 because this is a full circle and a circle adds up to 360. okay so this equals 360. 15 plus 3 is 18x is 360 and then 18 into 3 360 divided by 18 is 20 okay so we have x is 20 that means 7x is equal to 140 so this angle here is 140 so this polygon has an angle an interior angle of 140. Now, if his interior angle is 140, let's actually draw this. If this is 140, I'm interested in what is his exterior angle. And the exterior angle we get from here. So if that's 140, his 
interior angle is going to be 40 because these two add up to 180 and then you can just do um, 360 divided by 40 how many 40s in 360 and the answer is 9 so this has 9 sides because exterior angle uh, sorry 360 divided by exterior angle equals the number of sides okay um, so that is n equals 9 okay so far guys I would argue this is not an easy paper expand and simplify right we do n times n n times 4 minus 6 times n minus 6 times 4 n times n is n squared n times 4 is plus 4n minus 6n minus 24 gives me n squared minus 2n minus 24 and that's it solve this first step multiply across by 4 because this is a denominator I don't want so 2 4 times 2x minus 3 equals 3x minus 5 so when I multiply both sides by 4 this just disappears because they cancel okay multiply out 8x minus 12 equals 3x minus 5 get the x's on the left 8x minus 3x equals minus 5 and get the numbers on the right plus 12 so I subtract the 3x and add the 12 8x minus 3x is 5x minus 5 plus 12 is 7 so x is equal to 7 over 5 question 6 Asher bought an apartment this is the table um, about the value of the apartments in euros and the annual service charge band okay in 2021 the value of Ash's apartment was this six three four four hundred so she's in this um, she's in this uh, class if you like or this band the value of her apartment had increased by four percent from its value in 2020 has the annual service charge band changed show your working clearly okay so we actually don't know if it has changed but let's find out the way we find out is we go right what was it worth in 2020 we don't know so let's call it x we don't know what it was let's call it x and we're going to say now they have used x here but we're dealing with x so it's fine x times or not use, let's use a dot guys if you're okay with that that means times x times 1.04 so x times 1.04 is equal to 634400 now the reason i've done that is because this, the the value of her apartment before whatever it was multiplied by 1.04 increases it by 4% so we'll increase it by 4% and we get this so what was x well we can just divide by that to get x so 634400 divided by 1.04 and that is 634400 divided by 1.04 610000 okay so has it changed? Well, she was in this band before, um, this one. Sorry, she was in this band. She's in this band now, and she was in this band before because it was 610,000. So no, it hasn't changed. So I'm gonna say, therefore, no, it hasn't changed. Now you do need, you do need to show this working guys you do need to find out that it is a three mark question so if you just write no you um you pretty much won't get any marks so uh show you working okay pam bought a boat in each year after she bought the boat the value of the boat depreciated by 15 percent. that means it went down in value we got the total percentage by which the value of the boat had depreciated by the end of the second year after she had bought the boat okay so she bought a boat let's call it 
Um, how much did she pay for the boat? We don't know. Let's call it X. So she bought a boat for X. This is obviously a different X to part A, but whatever. She bought it by X. Now, what do we do to depreciate something by 15%? Well, we multiply it by, again, I'm going to use the dot. We multiply it by 0 0.85. By multiplying by 0 0.85, it reduces the, uh, the value by 15% because 100 minus 15 is 85. Okay, so x times this, but we're going to do it twice. This, um, we're going to multiply it by 0 0.85 twice because it's two years. So this is now if we multiply it by 0 0.85 squared, we get, let's do 0 0.85 squared, we get this, which is 0 0.7225. So it's 0 0.7225x. Okay, so now it is worth, it is worth 72.25% of what it was originally. So now I have to, guys, this is actually a tricky question. I have to turn this into a percentage, but, okay, let me write this. Therefore, now worth 72.25% um, of original price. Now it's worth it's worth seventy two point two five percent of original price, but the total percentage by which the value of the boat had depreciated is a hundred minus seventy two point two five, which is twenty seven point seven five. That's the answer. So that goes twenty seven point seven five percent. Okay, question seven. The nearest place on the ground. The height of the cylinder is this. The force produced, sorry, the force exerted by the cylinder on the ground is this. The pressure on the ground is this. Okay, fine. Work out the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so volume, guys, is, well, let's write that here. Volume is equal to pi or squared h. I think that's in the formula sheet, guys. Just double check. Volume is pi squared h, so we need the radius, and we don't have the radius. So that's the first thing I need to do, is figure out how am I going to get the radius. In fact, that's the key to this whole problem, because then I'm going to sub it into the, into the formula. Now, obviously, I'm going to use it using this thing here. Now, the area, the area is equal to pi r squared, because the area is a circle. The circle is what's hitting the the ground. Um, so we're given the pressure. The pressure is 1.4. We're given this formula. We're given the force. It's 72. And it's over the area. And the area is pi r squared. So see here now we have an equation. And there's only one variable. There's only one unknown, which is the radius. So this is the with this equation, I can find the radius. And then just sub it into this. Okay, so I'm going to multiply across, guys. So I'm going to have pi r squared, and I'm going to divide across by 1.4. So hopefully, guys, you're okay with that move. Multiply across and divide across. I can do that. So pi r squared is equal to 72 divided by 1.4. Um, 72 divided by 1.4 is this. Um, actually leave it like that, 360 over 7, 360 over 7, which means r squared is 360 over 7 pi, because I divide by pi, which means the radius is the square root of 360 over 7 pi. Now, I left it like that, guys, because I'll just do it in the calculator now. So it's the square root of... 360 over 7 pi is here, and we get 4.046. So this is 4.046.
Then we can get the volume. The volume is equal to pi times radius 4.046 squared times h, which is 18. That's straight from this formula. And that gives us, um, okay, what is this squared? This squared, I could have actually just kept this guys because I had it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The, and this squared times 18, which is that, and then times pi, which is that. He wants it to three significant figures, 925.7, which is 926. So that's 925.7 to three significant figures is 926. So this is 926. Okay, question eight. Write in standard form, right? There's only one mark, guys. Hopefully we can all do this. It's 8.9, first number is between one and 10. And then we go one, two, three, four, five back. So I'm gonna multiply by 10 to the power of negative five. Then this one, eight, three, four. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. So I need another two zeros. Um, one, two, three, four. That's correct. So this is eight, three, four, zero, zero. Okay, question nine. Simplify this, it's only one mark guys. Anything to the power of zero is one, so it's eight times one, which is just eight. Okay, find the value of P. So these ones guys, ignore this for a minute, and just, it's like saying, simplify this. So it's eight to the power of six, sorry, X. X to the power of six, divided by x to the power of negative five. Now that's equal to, when we divide, and the base is the same, we subtract the powers. Now just be careful because we're gonna subtract negative five. We're doing six minus minus five, which is x to the power of 11. And therefore, p is equal to 11. Not x to the power of 11, but 11. Okay, simplify fully. So we do them each separately, guys. Two cubed is eight. K squared cubed is K to the power of six, because we multiply the powers. And then M to the four cubed is M to the 12. So all together, we have, um, we have eight K to the six, m to the 12. Um, okay, that's question nine. Question 10. Two circles drawn on a centimeter grid with a scale factor of one centimeter for one unit. Okay, the circle C1 at the point with the coordinates this and the radius of C1. Sorry, the center of circle is at this point, right? Sorry, center and radius. C2, center and radius. Work out the distance between the center of C1 and the center of C2. Okay, well, that's just the distance formula. So distance is equal to, okay, the formula, guys, let me write it out. That may be a bit too long. The formula is x1 minus x2 squared plus y1, y1 minus y2 squared. This is essentially Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, this is our x1, x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's gonna be the square root of x1, sorry, which is minus one, minus seven squared, plus three minus 18 squared. And this is equal to the square root of, um, this is eight squared, so that would be 64, and this would be minus 15 squared, sorry, minus eight squared, it's still positive though, guys, they're, but they're square, the negatives become positive. That's 15 squared, which is 225, and this is equal to the square root of 64 plus 225, 64 plus 225, is 17. Okay, that's a nice, a nice whole number, and that's correct. Okay, 
Then he says, explain why C1 intersects circle C2. Okay, so his radius, guys, is 13. So let me just, if I draw the two circles, just we might be able to understand it better. Okay, so his center there is um, his center is minus one three. So this coordinate here is minus one three. And then there's another circle. Um, he's actually the smaller circle with center seven eighteen. Let's write. Let's just oh, let me draw it here seven. Need to do a better circle. Okay, so this circle here has center 7, 18. 7, 18. Now his radius, this guy's radius, is 13. And his radius is... Six. Now, if we we know the distance from this guy's center to this center is seventeen, because we just calculated it. Now, if this is seventeen and this is thirteen, then think about it. This is our thirteen plus six. We would have to have we would have to have thirteen. And then add another six there. That would have to be the center of the circle, and it would have to be less than than this seventeen. So the answer to the question is because seventeen, the distance between their centers, is bigger than the radiuses added together. So it's only it's only worth one mark, guys. Maybe I went to too much effort, but whatever. Um, so I'm just going to say because. 17, the distance between their centers, is greater than, sorry, is less than 13 plus 6. So they would have to intersect. Okay, question 11, factorize. Right, this is a difference of two squares, guys. 3x squared minus 2y squared, when you've something squared minus something squared, you can just go straight to 3x plus 2y, 3x minus 2y. Now, how did I know it was a difference of two squares? Well, the x squared minus y squared is, is obvious, and the 9 and the 4 is less obvious, but 9 is a square number and 4 is a square number, so you can just change that to 3x squared and 2y squared in a bracket. Okay, that's question two. That's it. Once you understand difference of two squares, guys, it's actually really easy. Okay, express, part B, express 7 over 8 minus x plus 3 over 4x as a single fraction in its simplest form. I want the common denominator. A common denominator, guys, is 8x. Why did I choose 8x? Well, because 8 goes into 8x, x times, and 4x goes into 8x, 2 times. It's the lowest common um lowest common denominator. Now, what did I do to 8 to get to 8x? I multiply by x, so I have to multiply the top by x. What did I do to 4x to get to 8x? I multiply by 2, so I have to multiply the top by 2, x plus 3. Now, because the denominators are the same, I can combine them. I just have one denominator. And this is 7x minus, be careful guys, it's minus 2 times x is minus 2x, and minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. And that gives us 5x minus 6 over 8x. 5x minus 6 over 8x. And that's it. Question 12. Rudolph goes to the gym. The probability that he uses a treadmill is 0 0.8. When he uses the treadmill, the probability that he will use the cross trainer is 0 0.3. When he does not, it's 0 0.6. Okay, so uses the treadmill, 0 0.8. Does not use the treadmill, has to be 0 0.2. Therefore, uses the treadmill, cross trainer is 0 0.3, 
this has to be 0 0.3, meaning this has to be 0 0.7, because these add up to one, these add up to one, and then does not use the, and then uses the cross train here, this is 0 0.6, so this has to be 0 0.4, okay. Part B, work out the probability that Rudolf uses both the treadmill and the cross trainer. Okay, that's an easy one, I think, guys. It is just, um, what is it, sorry, both the treadmill and cross trainer. So it's just 0 0.8. It's just this times this, which is 0 0.8 times 0 0.3 which is 0 0.24. Okay, question 13. Antoine is going on holiday. He makes three separate payments, payment one, payment two, payment three. Work out how much he has to pay for payment two. Okay, so we have how much, guys, is like he wants a value in dollars for payment two. So this is kind of tricky, guys, because this is a percentage, this is a fraction, and this is actually, um, well, this is a value. So ideally, if we can figure out what fraction or percentage is payment three, we can then figure out, um, well, how much is, is payment two. Okay, so what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna change everything into, fraction, into percentages, because I'm gonna do three eighths is equal to Okay, now I've done this here, guys. Three eighths is equal to 37.5% because to turn three eighths into a percentage, you just multiply by 100. So this is 37.5%. So this guy, 37.5%. This guy, 45%. What's left to get to this guy? Well, 45 plus 37, 45 plus 37.5 is 82.5, use your calculator if you want. So what's left, 100 minus 82.5 is 17.5. So that means this is 17.5%. So now I can say 17.5% is equal to 406. Get 1% by dividing by 17.5 and then get 45% which is what I'm trying to get because we want payment 2 45% is this times 45 so 406 over 17.5 times 45 and this is equal to um, 406 over 17.5 oops not sure what happened there over 17.5 times 45, oops, that was a mistake, guys, what am I doing? Um, the times 45 has to be outside, so times 45 is 1044, and that's in dollars, 1044 dollars. Okay, question 14. Function, this is the function, find f of 10. So this, guys, believe it or not, is very easy, part A at least. Part B is hard. Part A, f of 10, we just sub 10 in for x. So it's just two times 10. Don't worry about this funny notation, guys. That's the exact same as f of x equals. So it's two times 10 over 10 minus six. And you can literally put this into your calculator, but it's 20 over four, which is five. So this answer is five. Okay, it's only one mark. Then it says express the inverse function in this form, right? To get the inverse function, we let, always guys, let y equal this, this 2x over x minus six. And then we swap x and y. That's because that is what the inverse function is, guys. We swap x and y, so x is equal to 2y over y minus six. And then we essentially make y the subject. So I do y minus six times x. So I'm gonna multiply across by y minus six. Don't forget your bracket equals two y. I'm gonna multiply out the bracket, y x minus six x equals two y. I'm then gonna get all the terms with a y in them. 
um, on the left. So I've got y, x, minus 2y, I'm going to subtract this 2y, and all terms without a y in it on the right. So that equals 6x. So y, x minus 2y equals 6x. Then, this is the tricky bit, I am going to factorize out the y. So guys, let me just write that, that line again. So I'm just working down. I'm going to factorize out the y. So y into x minus 2 equals 6x. So I factorize y, taking it out of both of these because it's common. And then I divide by the x minus 2 to get y on its own. And that is the answer, guys. But we have to write it in the form they want. Well, it's here. Fine. So just 6x over x minus 2. Question 15. Abraham is going to play a computer game. He can win the game, draw the game, and lose the game. For any game, the probability he plays is this. When he wins a game, he scores this. When he draws a game, he scores zero. Loses, he loses five points. He plays three games, and the points he scores in each of the three games are added together to get his total score. Work out the probability that when he has played three games, his total score is zero points. Right, this, guys, is obviously challenging. Okay, so how can he get zero points? Well, he could, let's just look at this situation here. This is win, draw, or lose. So he could draw, draw, draw. If he draws all three games, he's gonna play three games. If he draws all three games, if he draws all three games, he will have zero points. Or he could win a game, lose a game, and then lose another game because that if he wins he gets 10 then he loses five and loses five he'll finish on zero but he could also lose win lose same thing minus five plus ten minus five is zero or he could lose lose win so there's three different ways this could happen and that is the only possible way he could fit sorry these are the only four possible ways he could finish on zero points so let's work out these probabilities. So we do we do 0 0.5. This one is uh, draw 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. I don't need to put the time sign, but let's put it in. Win, lose, lose is win is 0 0.3. Lose is 0 0.2 and lose is 0 0.2. And you'll see, guys, the pattern. These are actually the same. This is 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.2. And this is 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.3. Okay. This is then equal to, use your calculator, guys. This is 5 times 5 times 5 is um, 0 0.125. You can use your calculator, 125. This one, um, 3 times 2 times 2 is 12. So this would be, um, but be careful guys, this would be 0 0.012. 0 0.012. Because they, they all need three decimal places, so 0 0.012. This would be the same, 0 0.012. And this would be the same, 0 0.012. So add these together, and we get, well, we get the answer. Let's do that. So we get 0 0.125, 0 0.125 plus 0 0.012 plus 0 0.012 plus 0 0.012, which is, as a decimal, 0 0.161. 0 0.161, and that's definitely acceptable uh, working, guys. In fact, you've got a mark just for writing these down the different combinations. Okay, question 16. Without using a calculator, show that this equals this. Okay, 
this guys is not going to be easy so my first thought because there's no denominator here my first thought is to rationalize this denominator right so i'm going to do this 12 over root 2 minus 1 i'm just going to do this separately let's forget about this for a second and by the way guys don't worry too much about the right hand side either that's like the answer it's like simplify this and make it equal to that so don't worry about that thing in blue so i'm just going to focus on this for now um and it's going to be um it is going to be to sorry i'm going to rationalize the denominator which means i need to multiply above and below by root 2 plus 1 root 2 plus 1 Okay, put a bracket around this. The numerator becomes 12 times root two is 12 root two, and 12 times one is 12. So it's 12 root two plus 12. Okay, and the bottom becomes root two times root two is two. Root two times one is plus root two. Minus one times root two is minus root two, and minus one times one is minus one. Okay, and then these two, which is the reason why we did this whole rationalizing the denominator, multiplying by the conjugate, which is this, the bottom line, but change the sign to a plus, uh, is to do this. It gets rid of the root at the bottom. Now, nicely, it just becomes 12 root 2 plus 12 over 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's just this. Okay, I'm now going to look at this one separately, guys. I'm going to look at this. So, the root 2 to the power of 5, forget the minus for a second, just root 2 to the power of 5 is equal to root 2 times root 2 times root 2 times root 2. 2 times root 2. Now he says without using a calculator, guys, but you actually can use a calculator at this point. You could do root 2. Well, what's root 2 to the power of 5? Okay, I want to put the, the power outside, although it does actually give you the same answer. Um, root 2 to the power of 5 is okay actually he doesn't give me that let me try that again root 2 to the power of 5 okay 4 root 2 he does do it that's what i wanted let me just try and do the bracket bracket way um root 2 so i'm just going to put a bracket root 2 to the power of 5 Okay, I don't know why for some reason he's not able to do that. But if you actually do, if you just do root 2, root 2 to the power of 5 inside the root, that's the same thing, and the answer is 4 root 2. So this is 4 root 2. The reason it's 4 root 2 is because root 2 times root 2 is 2. Let's do it here. Root 2 times root 2 is 2 times, that's these two, root 2 times root 2 is 2 again and then there's another one here so it's 2 times 2 times root 2 which is 4 root 2 okay so now I have this minus this okay and we're nearly we are nearly there guys it is therefore 12 root 2 plus 12 forget the one minus 4 root 2 is equal to 12 root 2 minus 4 root 2, they're like like terms, is 8 root 2. So I have 8 root 2 plus 12. Okay, the, the 12 is fine. I just need 2 root 32 instead of this. So the way I can get 32 what do I need to multiply 2 by to get um, 32? Well, I need to multiply it by 16. So watch what I'm going to do here. 
I'm going to change the 8 into 2 times 4. So it's 2 times 4 times root 2. That's just the same as 8 root 2, plus 12 is still there. And now I'm going to change the 4 into root 16. Now why on earth would I do that? Well, only because he's making me write root 32 like this, and he's deliberately asking us to do it this way to show our understanding of thirds to prevent us from using a calculator because the calculator won't won't do that it won't make you put it into it can't put it into this form it'll just put it into its simplest form but you'll see now root 16 times root 2 this is plus 12 root 16 times root 2 is root 32 because 16 times 2 is 32 so this equals 2 times root 32 plus 12 which is what they asked. So obviously guys, that's a tricky question, but there we go. Okay, question 17. Particle P moves along a straight line. Its displacement is given by this, and it says work out the distance of P from O at the time, sorry, at the instant when V equals zero. So the distance of P from O will be the displacement but we need to find the time, and the time happens when v, this is important, when v equals zero. So we need to get the velocity. So the, the way we get velocity when we have the displacement, and guys, even if you find this question really confusing, which it is, when you, are, when you know you're dealing with a kinematics question, which is this velocity, time, um, distance, acceleration kind of question, just differentiate this because you'll definitely get a mark for that. So S is for T squared plus, now I'm gonna change this guys to T to the power of minus one. I can do that because when you divide by T, it's the same as raising to a negative power. So that's the same thing. Now the velocity is the derivative of the displacement. It's ds dt. So if I differentiate this, um, because it's the change in displacement with respect to time. So if I multiply by the power, 8t to the power of 1, because I subtract 1 from the power, then I multiply by minus 1, so it's minus 125t, and I subtract 1 from minus 1, so it's minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. Okay, now we are looking for when v equals 0. So I want when v equals 0. 8t minus 125. Now guys, I'm actually going to change it back because I'm, to solve this question, it'll help me. Um, hang on, I need to write that 8 again. 8t minus, I'm going to change it back into, instead of t to the minus 2, I'm going to divide by t squared, the same way I was able to change it to a negative power. I can change the negative power back to positive power, but underneath the line. And this is equal to zero. Okay, so this looks like a pretty difficult uh, equation to solve because it's, it's not even a quadratic at this um, power of two underneath the line. But what I can do is I can add this term to the other side, giving me 125 over t squared. I then multiply across, giving me eight t cubed, because I do 8t times t squared, I'm multiplying by this, is equal to 125. Then I divide by 8, 125 over 8, which means t, and I'll go up here, t is equal to the cubed root of 125 over 8, which believe it or not, use your calculator, guys, if you didn't know this, it's 5 over 2 or 2.5. That's because the cube root of 125 is five and the cube root of eight is two. Okay, so now I just need to find the displacement when t is 2.5. So I need to find, uh, I need to find s when t equals 2.5. And that's pretty easy because I just do four times 2.5 squared plus 125 over 2.5, and this is equal to um, 4 
times 2.5 squared squared plus 125 over 2.5 and it gives me um, 75 exactly okay nice okay that's question 17 question 18 and that was five marks guys I would argue that's a nice five marks 75 okay question 18 this triangle a b c and we need to find x so guys my first thought well is it's not a right angle triangle so I have to use either the sine rule or the cosine rule to find an angle my first thought is the sine rule because I don't have the three sides to find an angle which I need for the cosine rule however when the sine rule the sine rule I need um, angle sine angle over 9.7 equals sine this angle over this side. So I need this side here. Let's actually call this Y, which I don't have. So I will use the sine rule, but first I need to find Y and I'm gonna find Y using the cosine rule. So it's a bit like, well, many of the questions that I've seen where you have to use both or, or at least, well, or use the rule twice. So I'm gonna use the cosine rule first to find Y because I have this angle and the two sides um, well, the two sides and the angle between them, which is a cosine rule question. So y squared is equal to 9.7 squared plus 12.3 squared minus 2 times 9.7 times 12.3 times cos of 115. That is the cosine rule. So y is equal to, and guys, you can just put this straight into the calculator in one go. y is the square root of 9.7 squared plus 12.3 squared 12.3 squared minus 2 times 9.7 times 12.3 times the cos of 115 and I get 18.607 18.607 now I do look to see guys does that make and I would recheck my answer as well guys but does that make sense in context yeah it should be bigger than both of these so I think that probably is correct okay now that I've got that I can use the sine rule I can say sine x over the opposite side 9.7 is equal to sine 115 over his opposite side, which is this guy, over y, and we know y is 18.607. Multiply across by the 9.7, and I get sine x is equal to 9.7 times sine 115 over 18.607. That is sine of x. To find x, I do the inverse sine, inverse sine of all of this. 9.7 times sine 115 over 18.607 close brackets what does this equal so i do shift sine inverse sine this 9.7 times sine 115 over 18.607 close brackets and I get 28.19 he wants the three significant figures 28.19 three significant figures is 28.2 does that make sense in context yeah why not that could easily be 28.2 degrees okay that is question 18 and that is correct 28.2 question 19 OAB is a sector S of a circle with center O and radius this. A circle C has radius or minus 2 meters. Um, this angle is 45. Fine. The area of sector S is twice the area of sector C. Find the value of R. Okay. Um, so let's find the let's find the area of this guy first. So this guy's area. This guy's 
area is equal to this guy's area. Oh, sorry, a circle C. Okay, fine. So this guy's area is equal to uh, pi r squared. So the area of a circle, let's write this here. Area of a circle, area of a circle, which we don't get in the formula book because you need to know this, is pi r squared. So the area of the sector is pi r squared, but my r is this guy, r plus seven, so it's pi r squared times 45 over 360. Okay, 45 over 360 is actually, guys, um, 45 over 360 is, no, 45 over 360, 360 is 1 over 8. So this is actually equal to pi over 8, because it's pi times 1 over 8 is pi over 8, or plus 7 squared. Okay, that's the area of this sector. That's area um, A, O, B. Okay, the circle C, this is a totally different circle, has this radius. So let's do circle C. And his area is pi r squared, or pi times r minus 2 squared. Okay, now, the, it says the area of the sector is twice the area of the circle. So, we can say that this area, um, area, well, let's do area, let's change color, guys. Area of A, O, B is twice the area, two times, two times area of the circle because he says that this is twice this, so this equals two times this. Okay, area AOB is this, it's pi over eight, or plus seven squared, and area of the circle is two times pi, or minus two squared. Now guys, I could multiply out these, these brackets, but I'm gonna show you how there's a nicer way to solve this, um, and I'm just gonna move down here. There is a nicer way to solve this. Firstly, the pi's can cancel. I can divide both sides by pi. And then I can multiply across by this eight. So r plus seven squared is equal to 16 times r minus two squared. Now guess what I can do? I can square root both sides. So I'm gonna do square root of this, equals the square root of this. Now when you square root something squared, you just get r plus seven. When you square root the 16, you do these two separately, square root of 16 is four, and the square root of this squared is r minus two. Okay, so this is a much nicer way than if I actually multiply out the brackets. So this is r plus seven equals, let's multiply out this, four r minus eight. I'm going to do leave the r over here, so this is 4r minus this r. I know I say r funny, guys. Everyone always makes fun of me for it. 7 plus 8 here. Okay, fine. 4r minus r is 3r. 7 plus 8 is 15. And finally, r is equal to 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So the radius, no sorry, it's not the radius, it's just the value of R, it's five, and that's correct. Okay, that's question 19, it's worth five marks, guys, and it is answer five as well. Question 19, this is question 20. The diagram shows a sketch of part of this curve, maximum point coordinates are ST, Find in terms of S and T, okay, this is important, guys, in terms of S and T, the coordinates of the maximum point with this equation. So the X minus two in the bracket, will move it right, we'll move the graph right two. So I need to add two to the X coordinate. So the X coordinate is S plus two. The Y coordinate stays the same. 
This one, I need to stretch it vertically by three. So it's a stretch, a vertical stretch by three. So I multiply the y coordinate by three, which is t times three, or three t, and the x coordinate stays the same, so it's just s. So only two marks, guys, but I think if you know your transformations, uh, an easy an easy two marks. Question 21. Instagram shows information about the total time m minutes taken by each child to walk to school. Okay, so it says there's no children above 100 and there's 10 below 20. Okay, so that means, guys, that this here, this number here is 10. That means the area of this bar, rectangle, is 10, which means the height has to be 0 0.5 because 10 times, or sorry, 20 times 0 0.5 gives me 10. Now, an important formula, guys, that I always kind of write at the start of these is the area is equal to the frequency. If you just remember that, you can figure it out. The area of the bar is equal to the frequency. So that means if that's 0 0.5, these are going up, these little boxes are 0 0.1. So that's 0 0.5, that's 1, 1 1.5, 2, this is 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, he wants to work out an estimate for the number of children for whom m is between 50 and 80. Okay, so 50, 50 guys is here, and 80 is here. But let's Okay, let's break it into three different rectangles. I need to get that area. I then need to get this area. Let's just do that again. I need to get this area here. And I need to get um, this area here. Okay, now the pink area this height is 2.9, so the pink area, let's just scroll down a bit here, is, let's do it in pink, this distance here from 50 to 60 is 10, so it goes 10 times, and this height is 2.9, so 10 times 2.9 equals 29. The green area, so this is the green area, the green area is this is between 60 and if this is 70 guys this is hang on let me just see where I actually stopped this line okay so we have to be super careful guys this line here is so if this is 60 and this is 80 and this is 70 we're going up in two so that's 72 74 76 78 sorry, 68, 70, 72, 74, 75. So this number here is actually 75. So it's, it's halfway between two squares. So that's 75. So this distance here is 60 to 75, which is 15. So I'm gonna do 15 times, and the height is 3.2. 15 times 3.2. Um, 15 times 3.2, guys, is 15 times 3.2 is 48. This is 48. And then finally, this here, the blue area, again, this is now 5 because it's going from 75 to 80. So that length is 5. And this is 2. So it's just 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is easy, that is 10. Okay, so the total, the total is, we just add these up, 29 plus 48 plus 10, which is 58, 88, 87, use your calculator guys, answer is 87. Okay, and that's correct. Question 22. A solid is made from a cone and a hemisphere. The circular plane face of the hemisphere coincides with the circular base of the cone. Okay. The radius is 20. The curved surface area of the cone 
is 580 pi centimeters squared. The volume of the solid is this, work out the exact value of K, right? Obviously, this, guys, is a tricky question. So the curved surface area of a cone, let's start with that. I think, guys, I actually can't even remember what it is, but luckily, it's here. Okay, it's pi or L. The curved surface area is pi or L. Um, volume of a sphere, guys, while well, we're at it, is here, and the volume of the cone, we're gonna need those, but let's go back. It's pi or L, where L is the length, um, the slant length, we say. Okay, so that is 20, the curved surface area. So let's draw a line from here to here. So this is L, I don't know what it is yet, but I can find it from this, because I know pi or L, that's the formula for the curved surface area, is equal to 580, and uh, or is 20, so it's 20 pi L, sorry, 580 pi, 20 pi L equals 580 pi. The pi's cancel, I can divide both sides by pi, and then I can divide both sides by 20, and L is equal to 580 divided by 20, which is the same as 58 divided by two, which is 19. So L is, um, sorry, that's definitely not right. L is equal to 29, not 19, 29. Okay, so this L is 29. Okay, now, we want to get the volume of the solid. Now bear in mind guys, if that length there is 20, the, well, that's the radius of the hemisphere as well. So I can get the radi the volume of the hemisphere easily. The volume of the, of the cone, I need to use the, the formula. So volume, let's write these here. The volume of a cone is a third pi or squared h. Now I don't have h because it's this value here, but I can get it. I can get h from Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm gonna say h squared, let's do it here, h squared plus 20 squared equals 29 squared, h squared equals 29 squared minus 20 squared, and then h is the square root of this, I think guys, that this is a nice Pythagorean triple, which will give me a nice whole number here. So 29 squared minus 20 squared is 21. Okay, that's a famous, well, not that famous, but it is a Pythagorean triple, 20, 21, and 29. So this H is 21 centimeters. So this H is 21. So now I can get the volume, volume of the cone, the volume of the cone is a third uh, pi r squared h, which is a third pi times 20 squared, because tw r is 20, times h, which is 21. Okay, this guys, you can do on your calculator, uh, well, I could nearly do it in my head, guys, because 21 divided by three is seven. Let's just do it like this. It's 20 squared times 21 divided by three is 2,800, and there's a pi, so let's leave that there. He wants it all in exact conditions, exact form. He doesn't want, he doesn't want a, a, a decimal, so just leave it like that. So that's the volume of the cone. The volume of the hemisphere, volume of hemisphere, let's call it hem, is equal to, now the volume of a sphere, volume of a sphere is um, four over three pi or cubed. But this isn't a full sphere, it's half a sphere. So I half that, um, which is actually gonna be two over three. So it's two over three pi r cubed because I've essentially halved this. Okay, so this is equal to two over three pi
pi times the radius, which is 20 cubed. Okay, hopefully this is a nice number. I do 20 cubed is 8,000. 8,000 times 2 over 3 is 16,000 16, over 3. Okay, so let's write that, guys. This is 16,000 over 3. And again, there's a pi. Okay, so this means the total, the total, um, the total volume. So total volume, I may as well use a new color, guys. Total volume is this plus this, 2800 pi plus 16,000 over three pi. And this is, if you add it together, and you can actually do this with your calculator, guys, this plus 2800 is equal to 24400 over three, two, four, four, oh, oh, over three, pi. So therefore, therefore, what's the value of k? Well, k is just this, it's this 24, 400 over three. k is equal to 24, 400 over three without the pi because of that. And that's the answer. Um, question 22, okay. Question 23. Polygon has n sides, where n is greater than five, so it's bigger than a, a pentagon. When arranged in order of size, starting with the largest number, the sizes of the, of the interior angles of the polygons in degrees are in terms of an arithmetic sequence. Here are the first five terms of this sequence. Find the value of n, show clear, Algebraic working. Okay, tricky question, guys. Um, one thing, well, I'll start with this. So, if you recall, the sum, the sum of, these are the interior angles. Sum of interior angles, sum of the interior angles in a polygon is n minus 2 times 180. That is because, if I was to show you very quickly, imagine I have a pentagon. A pentagon will have n minus 2 or 5 minus 2 triangles. 1, 2, 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 minus 2. 3 triangles and there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So this is the formula that you can remember. And this will work for any, if I, did, if I drew a hundred sided polygon, I'd have 98 triangles. So it's n minus two, and ultimately we're trying to find n. So the sum of the interior angles is equal to this. But the sum of the interior angles is also equal to the sum of this series or this sequence. And I know the sum of an arithmetic sequence is n over two, 2 times a plus n minus 1d. This is in the formula booklet, where n is, I don't know, a is the first term, it's 177. n is again the thing I don't know, we're trying to find it, and d is the common difference. Now be super careful guys, the common difference is not 2, it's negative 2, because we're going down in 2s. Okay, so the common difference is negative 2. So I can sub all this in here. I have n over 2, 2a, which is 2 times 177, plus, let's move this away, guys. This is over here. Plus, again, n minus 1 times d, which is negative 2. This is the sum of n terms. Now let's just simplify this a little bit. We've n over two, two times 177. Let's do that on the calculator. 177 times two is 354. So this is 354. And now we're gonna multiply this out. Minus two times n is minus two n, and minus two times minus one is plus 
2. Okay, so this is, and I may as well simplify this as much as possible, guys. This is n over 2 times 354 plus 2, which is 356 minus 2n. And then finally, 2 goes into both of these, so I can just write it as n times this divided by 2, 356 divided by 2, 178. And this divided by 2 is just n. Okay, so this is the sum of n terms. Now we said, or at least I said, that this must equal this. So let's write that down. Um, I'm going to write it uh, here. So n times 178 minus n has to equal this. Now you could write this as 180 times n minus 2, which I will write it here. 180 times n minus 2. Okay, I'm going to multiply this out, and this is going to give me a quadratic equation. So I'm going to get 178n minus n squared equals 180n minus 360. I'm going to put my n squared, I'm going to bring everything to the right because I'm going to have n squared on the right because I'm adding it so it becomes positive. 180n minus 178n is plus 2n and then I'm left with minus 360 equals zero. Now I need to factorize this. I need to find two numbers that multiply together to give minus 360 and add to give you um, two. Use your calculator guys if you're not sure. I'll show you the quick way to do it. But you do want to put in the factors. So use your calculator. Polynomial, two, degree two, one n squared, two n minus 360, I know it says x, but it doesn't matter, and I get 18 and minus 20. Those are my two solutions, 18 and minus 20, and that tells me, oh yeah, if I multiply 18 and 20, I get 360. So the factors are actually plus 20, n plus 20, and n minus 18. That gives me the... Um, if I multiply that out, I'll get this. Therefore, therefore, n equals minus 20, or n equals 18. So these are the factors, but the solutions are the opposite, because it's when n plus 20 equals 0, hence n equals minus 20. But we're talking about a polygon having n sides. What polygon could possibly have negative 20 sides. Well, obviously, it's not possible. So n must be positive. You could even write that, guys. n is greater than 0. Therefore, n is equal to 18. And you have to put that, guys. You can't just say it's this or this. But the answer is 18. And they do give us a lot of space to do it. Okay. Thankfully, guys, last question. Question 24. Express um, each of A, B, and C in terms of Q so that this can be written as this. Okay, so here, guys, we have a situation, and I think this is the first time I've seen it in all these videos I've made, where they have forced us or prevented us from using our calculator. So I have a nice trick way of solving the, or completing the square, but if they use letters, we cannot do it. So how do I do it? Well, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to write it like this to begin with, minus q um, x squared plus 12x plus q. I'm going to put the x squared term first. Then I'm going to take out, I'm going to divide by minus q. So I'm going to take out the minus q and I'm left with x squared minus 12 over q x. Now, why did that become minus and why did I, did I put a q underneath there? Well, basically, I'm multiplying by minus q here. 
So I need this minus Q there to cancel out. So I'll have my plus 12X. If you multiply this out, well, you see, look, you get minus QX squared plus minus times minus is plus, and the Qs cancel, so you get 12X. Okay, this is hard, obviously, guys, but this is how you do it. So we get this, and then there's a plus Q at the end. Okay, then to complete the square, we leave this minus Q here. I put the square brackets deliberately because then I do a uh, round brackets and I do X minus and I half this term here and the half to half 12 is 6. So this becomes minus 6 over Q, um, 6 over Q and then I close the bracket and I square it. I then have to subtract, I always subtract this thing squared, whatever this is. I don't care if it's plus or minus, it's six over Q. I have to subtract six over Q squared. That is because um, when you multiply this out, you'll get a plus six over Q squared term at the end that you don't want because it's not here. Anyway, um, and then outside the bracket, I have this plus Q. Okay, nearly finished. I can then expand. So I'm going to multiply by this minus Q. So I have minus Q times X minus 6 over Q squared minus Q times this. So it's minus Q times... Um, okay, well, hang on. First I'll write plus because the minus and minus is plus. And then I have Q times, okay, just be careful guys, this is Q times, I'm gonna square it now, I'm gonna do 36 over Q. Why am I doing that? Well, because, oh, sorry, it's 36 over Q squared, because I'm gonna to have to cancel one of these one of these Qs here. So this is, th six squared is 36, Q squared is Q squared, and this Q comes from this Q because I'm multiplying out and it minus by minus becomes plus. And then finally, I have a plus Q. Okay, nearly finished, guys. This is then minus Q, um, X minus six over Q squared. These cancel, so I'm left with 36, well, one of these cancels, 36 over Q, because this one cancels with one of these plus Q. Okay, now, he says this thing, this A, this can be written as A minus B times X minus C squared. So that means the minus B is, let's highlight something guys, the minus B is minus q it's this thing the b is the thing that comes before this so b is actually equal to q it's minus b and it's minus q so just b equals q okay then the c is minus c so this c here is this six over q and then the a is whatever is left so this pink thing is the a and what's left here well, it's all of this. So therefore, A is equal to 36 over Q plus Q, B is equal to Q, and C is equal to six over Q. Okay, I'm well aware, guys, that's really difficult. If you're not like super good at completing the square, obviously write them there. Um, but that's the paper, guys. That's question 24, and yeah. We're done. I will see you in the next video.